Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna answer a question from Radip. Hi Daniel, can you show me how to set up Maven project in Azure DevOps release pipeline? The release pipeline from Microsoft in Azure is a little bit like Circle CI and uh, Travis CI and uh, also a little bit like GitHub Actions, and there are a, a few other of these kind of CI solutions where you can run some work, uh, run tests, for instance, in, in the cloud, uh, while when you uh, deploy things or when you are committing things to your branch. Uh, so to get some more context here, I thought I would look into what the actual um, features are of these different solutions and why you should choose uh, one of them. Uh, so I looked into Circle CI, GitHub Actions, Azure DevOps and Travis CI. And first off, I do a lot of open source. So I thought it was interesting to see if the, uh, some of them actually supported open source. And what I could find, and I didn't look very much in deep, deep depth, but uh, I could find that GitHub Actions is free for open source or public repos you can run uh, CI tasks on. And Travis CI is also supporting open source. So if you're working with open source, everything is free on Travis CI. I didn't see that kind of a commitment from Circle CI or Azure DevOps. Uh, and if you want to boost your process, you actually can run a lot more in uh, the different environments. Uh, for instance, in uh, Travis CI, or I think, believe in all of them, you get one free process. You can run one job concurrently uh, in their systems. And if you want to run more things, uh, and bunch them up if you have a lot of workloads and a lot of commits that needs to actually run you need to pay for the overhead the extra and what the <laughs> what the interesting thing here is that there are a few different module models for how to handle this and if we look into circle ci and github actions if you have uh, a free circle ci then you have 1000 minutes that you can run your jobs in Circle CI. And if you have GitHub Actions set up, you can run 2000 minutes free for your subscription. Uh, and if you get the pro account, you get 3000 um, minutes that you can run <laughs> your work in. And for business, it's 10,000, and for enterprise, it's 50,000. So GitHub Actions works a little bit different in their model than the other providers. Uh, if you are working with uh, uh, Circus CI, for instance, if you pay them 50 bucks, you get one extra concurrent workload and ultimately uh, unlimited amount of runs and a limited amount of time and so on. And for the price of 40 bucks, you get the same on Azure DevOps. Uh, so, it, and if you want to run more than one, I think that you actually have a little bit more of a larger project. You don't have your own uh, free time tier project where you're just trying things out and committing. Uh, if you are in need of this, then you are actually a team that works and you probably have a company behind you. So 40 bucks is very affordable uh, just to get some extra speed on your um, workload. And Travis CI, they have 69 uh, for the same kind of setup. Uh, and if you then boost these even more uh, for Azure DevOps for every uh, extra concurrent workload. So if you want to run three in parallel, you need to pay 40 bucks for each of them. So three, then there is two extras or 80 bucks. And the same goes for Circle CI and Travis CI. But some of them are not linear. Um, so they might be cheaper as 
you get more concurrent workloads. Uh, but that's pretty much what the uh, pricing mod model is for the different solutions that you can use. So let's look a little bit more into how to set up uh, Azure DevOps. So I already have a pipeline here, but I will create a new project just so we can see that. Let's do a testing project. Let's put it to public and let's say that we have git and uh, basic for this and we will create that project this will take a little bit of time for it to set up a new project and then you will need to choose what solution you want to connect to this project so for instance i wanted uh, first off to connect a github account to this so i looked into that and actually if you connect your github account they want access to your public repos, your private repos, and also access to all organizations that you are a part of. And I do uh, some open source uh, development and I'm uh, part of some organizations, so I couldn't really get uh, give access to that. Um, so I wanted to use this Azure Git repos. And if I put that down, you see that there is no matching uh, repositories found here. And this took me a while to figure out why I didn't have a local repository that I connect, could connect to. And I thought that was a little bit strange, but if you want to <laughs> find your way uh, so you actually have a Git repository, so we were over here and tried to create a new pipeline, you need to go to overview and then click on this link down here. I'm not sure if you can actually see that easily. Or uh, pipelines or manage your services. And if you go in here, you can actually find down here repos and turn that on. So if you turn that on for this project and then return back here and then go in, you see over here, then you have repos over here as one part. Then you have a repository for this, this, uh, uh, this pipeline. And then you can go into pipeline, create a new pipeline, choose a shore pipelines, and you should be able to find it here. Uh, you might need to actually put something into the repository. Let's see if we need to add something. We might be able to, yeah, we can initialize it with the readme down here. So now we have a repository. Maybe we can connect it down here then. Uh, yeah, now we have this testing and then we can just create a starter pipeline and save and run. Uh, so this is <laughs> what you need to do to actually get to it to work uh, in a short pipeline and just set up a very simple uh, pipeline to run on a shore with no, nothing else. You don't have any external uh, dependencies that you just run it on a shore. So if you want this set up, you need to, uh, in the overview, go to services, create the repository, and uh, then you can either uh, push uh, data to the repository using your Git client on your computer, or you can do as I did and just initialize a repository and then create this YAML file that is the actual running script. And if we look at this YAML file, you see that this triggers when something is pushed to master. It has a pool here, so it works with an Ubuntu Linux, the latest version. And then it has a little script here that just echoes uh, hello world and a little bit of a display name for that uh, task. And then you have some other task down here just as a hello world script telling you that you can do more things. Uh, and after I had set up this, uh, the next thing I did was googling a little bit to find how to set up Maven task. And on the Azure documentation here, under build tasks, you actually have a Maven setup. And if we look into this, I believe that the only thing that is required is the actual POM file, uh, what the name of that is. I'm not sure why this is required either, because POM.xml uh, is the 
usual name of the pom file in the repository so i don't think that that is actually something that should be required either and the goals here i put in a goal as well uh, it's optional but i think it's good to actually tell the system if you want to package something if you only want to run the test if you want to run it integration tests and so on. So what kind of goal you have in your project is also good to uh, mention. So let's go into the code editor here. I have this very advanced function here where I add two integers and I wanted to create a little test for this. So this is a test that can test that you can add two to five and the expected value would be zero, uh, no, <laughs> seven and so this is a very test, a simple test for the addition script here, but I want those to run in uh, my pipeline. Uh, the POM file is also very simple. It's a snapshot. I have compiler source set up, so I, have, uh, I will run this in 1.8. And then I have a dependency here for JUnit, and that's just to run my scripts. And I also added a Surefire plugin uh, to uh, my setup here, but the, this is standard things to actually work with uh, Maven files. This is this is not not something that is unique for Azure. Uh, and then we have this Azure pipeline here, also very simple. It will trigger on master. It will use the same Ubuntu latest image. You can see here that I actually copied and pasted the started pipeline and then I just uh, exchanged the steps. So my step here is a task maven uh, at version 3 and my inputs is the maven pom file and the goal and important to see here is the indentation. So you have the indentation this means that these two values are inputs to this and the inputs in turn are inputs to the this task and the task is a part of this step so it, uh, it's important how you actually add things to this file in order to get everything to work uh, but this is standard YAML uh, syntax but it's important uh, to know that you have it set up in the right way and when I had uh, committed and pushed this to my pipeline. If we go back here, we go out, we go into the other one, the testing pipeline. And we can see here that I have a summary that 67 of my builds has succeeded. If I go into the pipeline and look at the builds, I have here the last run set up CI and or is it a uh, it's uh, backwards, so the last thing is a small fix. So let's look at the uh, check out Maven. So this is the Maven task, and if we go down here, we see that it uh, actually uh, gets a lot of things downloaded. And down here, you see you have a build success. Here we have the test to see that it run one test and no failures, no errors, and no skipped tests. So the test was run, it was successful. Uh, I know that this is a very simple and a very basic uh, setup, but I think this will uh, at least show a little bit how to set up a pipeline and how to use Maven to run your workloads in Azure DevOps. Running things in Circle CI which I have tested or in Travis CI and also in uh, GitHub Actions are very similar. I believe that uh, depending on what things you want to set up, some of them might be easier, some of them might be more flexible and so on, but most of them are um, good to use for any workload. So whatever you want to set up or whatever you want to do, look at the documentation for the specific task that you want to run and then just uh, figure out how you want to set up your CI solution for your workload. Uh, I hope that you found this um, video interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any question about CI or Azure DevOps, 
put them down in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues, and I really hope to see you in the next video.